Hello, my name is Bert Oliva, and today we bring you Mobile Mike. My team and I travel the world looking for global gems, showcasing people that are using their potential to change the world. It's not about luck. It's about finding your own personal recipe to live the life that you want and deserve. Mobile Mike is an entertainer, advertiser, marketer, promotions entrepreneur, and a premier marketing force. To design Mobile Mike, check it out, we've just opened the doors. You guys are waiting to meet Puff Daddy. By the way, you just got back from the Bahamas. That's right. Now tell me, off the record, did you get any action over there? Yeah, a little bit. He got some action at the Atlantis. His creativity and ingenuity capture many local events. The adventure continues. We are live in location, as you can see. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It is I, Mobile Mike, live in the road, hanging out at Dunkin' Donuts. But Mobile Mike has been recognized throughout the years for his continued community service by mayors and state politicians by helping those less fortunate in our communities. He is an energetic entertainment professional. Good here. It's what America rides on. Mobile Mike money. That's how I roll. It's a cordless mic. It'll work. It goes anywhere I go. Mobile Mike is a true South Florida personality. You better take my microphone. The sheriffs are here. No, I'm gone. getting mad. You're going to have to bail me out, baby. Bail me out. This inside glimpse into the life of Mobile Mike will give you his personal recipe for creating his success. This is the deal. I don't want any surprises. I turn the fantasy into reality every day. And it's up to you to see if you have what it takes to make a success in your own life. Mobile Mike. Mobile Help. Mike. Okay, who's Mobile Mike? Mobile Mike is a character invented uh, 40 years ago when I was born. Came out with a microphone in my mouth and I always wanted to be on television, radio. I always thought, found a fascination with being on stage and entertaining people. Where were you born? Actually, I was born in Detroit, Michigan. And how long were you there? Uh, most of my life. Then I went to school in Connecticut for four years and then moved to South Florida and uh, the rest is history. And you went to school for what? Broadcast journalism. But you knew it since you were a child? I kind of knew it, but uh, you know, I, I was going to be an attorney, actually. You know, I started off in business law school, and after six months, I knew that wasn't for me because I wasn't going to behave in a courtroom. But then how did that turn into radio? It's interesting. The program director from a radio station in Michigan lived next door to my mom, and they let the guy go because he got in an accident for drunk driving a station vehicle the night before. So he said, how would you like to go on the radio and fill in? I said, fill in what? I said, are you kidding me? I'm a kid. At just 17 years old and energetic, passionate young man who grew up in Connecticut and Michigan set roots in South Florida to follow his dream of radio stardom. Miami's party station Power 96 it is iMobile Mike. So you had not done radio, no. you had no DJ experience? None. Nothing. None, and I was on the air in Detroit, uh, you know, on overnights. Within six months of that, I all of a sudden ended up on the morning show. It was, it was like, wow. I but don't once know. you got behind the mic, you just lit up. It was on. It was, it was like, wait a second, how long is this guy doing? Where did he come from? Then they met me. They realized I was a kid, and they were like, what's going on here? I don't get it. Like they'd line up interviews, and I'd come in, and I'd just start doing the interview before the even the jock that was doing the morning show did the interview, and I was asking all the right questions when this guy was writing down all the right questions, and didn't even know how to ask him when he did that. It was just, it was a gift I was born with. No one in your family has ever done something like no, that? No, nobody. You're the only one. The only one. And then you decided to come to South Florida. Came down and met Bo Griffin. She had a morning show. Good morning. Your time check is coming up on 8.03. Pump Daddy is on the way. And he said he's getting ready to get married, so we can take anything. No, we I didn't have to say I came into the radio station asking for X amount of money, and they threw me out, told me I was crazy, that nobody in South Florida makes that kind of money. I said, okay. I hooked up with Bo, uh, who gave me the opportunity to be on the morning show. She said, I'm not going to be able to give you a bunch of money, but I'll tell you what. I'll, get, I'll make you an intern here. And what I'll do is I'll give you airtime. I'll give you two commercials an hour, and I'll give you two call-ins an hour on my show, and then you can do various day parts throughout the day, and that's pretty much where I began my career as a flipped on Power 96. It took just one opportunity to get his foot in the door, and Michael, the overnight radio sensation, transformed into Mobile Mike. It is I, Mobile Mike, up early this morning. Is, how did you end up with the empire that you've created? I built my brand on community service and helping people. I've always been about giving back to people. I always want to help people. I see somebody down with their luck. I want to be the guy that steps in and help them. And you know, Habitat for Humanity called me uh, when that disaster happened in Haiti. We raised five hundred sixty thousand dollars for those people in twenty-four hours. When you say we, we as um... myself. 
I put all my sponsors together, all my radio stations, all my TV stations. We set up and stage an event, and basically everything we take there goes to that charity. Your sponsors are basically your friends. How does that happen? Well, I don't just uh, get into business to do business with somebody, make money of them. I like to do business with people I like and trust. That way I can build more of an enterprise with them. It's mutually beneficial for everybody. Having a goal is like having a roadmap. There's different types of goals, short-term goals and long-term goals. A lot of people go into business without even having their goals set up, and goals are really important. Plan for the future. Work your plan, plan your work. If you like my work, you'll love my plan. You gotta get it all together. You gotta be able to set yourself up not only five, but maybe even 10 years ahead of the game. What are you planning in the next five years? Where do you see yourself? Or in a completely different place. I stepped a couple of years ago outside all the radio stations. I worked for Beasley Broadcast Group for 12 years, Cox Radio for five. I've been with Clear Channel six and a half. I stepped outside the realm of my normal comfort zone to open a new facility here to expand my operations. I've got 15,000 square feet, printers now for wraps, all my own t-shirt factory equipment. So what I'm doing now is I'm going in a different direction. I've opened an event company called MME, Mobile Mike Media and Entertainment. So I've been doing concerts and events down here for 22 years for everybody, and they make the lion's share of the money. Now what I'm doing is I'm doing it myself. There's a lot of money in concerts and events, and I think that's where the future is going for me. The older you get, the more energy you have. <laughs> it's in my blood to do this. But seriously, what motivates you? Changing people's lives, seeing what people go through, whether they're in a bad marriage or they lost their job. To take those people and turn their life around and, and put a positive spin on the bad luck that happened for them. When one door closes, three more open. And, and people aren't, aren't necessarily smart enough to see that. I've been able to point that out to them because it's happened to me. What I do is different and unique, and I talk to talk and I walk to walk. Is there anyone one else doing what you're doing. Nobody in the world does what I do. There's not one other Nobody. mobile mic out there. No. So there's always competition, but you have none. Nobody. Why? It's not so easy to do what I do. Nobody has the worth ethics that I have. I get up at 5.30 in the morning. I get home at midnight every single day, seven days a week. I mean, when I started with Power 96, I didn't have any money. I moved down here with nothing. I went to Enterprise Rent-A-Car. They had just started. I convinced the district manager to give me a car, a van. How did and you convince him to do that? I don't even remember. But he, whatever <laughs> I said, he bought the bullshit. You believed in yourself so much yep. that you let other people I see that dream. It, and it worked out, and I still have a relationship with him. How do you walk into one of these meetings? And I had the magic you? tongue. The magic tongue always worked. Like, because give me an example. Perfect example. In JM Lexus, and you know, they said, listen, Power 96 is not our audience. You know, the, the demographic is X, and the income is Y. I said, that's cool. Forget about the radio airtime you're going to get. I'm at Fantasy Fest. I created Bartender's Bash. I'm at NASCAR in the pits. I'm going to be live on Fort Lauderdale Beach three days a week, Miami Beach, Coral Gables, Coconut Grove. I'm giving you a 1,000 impressions a week. What's that worth? How are you going to do that? Laid it all out for them here, the pictures. Congratulations. Go pick up your car tomorrow. When it works, it works. So my value to most of the people that I interact with to this day is not necessarily the airtime and radio I give them. It's the visibility on the streets, and it's my passion for the game. With the new media, social media, everything is shifting. How is that doing? No, for that hasn't hurt me at all. Radio listenership's down a little bit overall because there's a lot of options out there. My biggest level of success has always been on the streets, shaking hands and kissing babies, whether it's at a Miami Dolphins tailgate party, at a birthday party, at Hooters on a weekend hosting something. I'm out there all the time doing this. No matter where I go, I find people I know. Top leaders know how to hone in on their strengths. It's really important. Most people don't know what their strengths are, and the reason is because they're embarrassed. They think that by them telling the world what it is, they're being egotistical. That has nothing to do with ego. It's you having certainty. What is your strength? Learn how to hone it, work with it, so it becomes an asset in your business. Well, I got a couple of questions. What do you think is your biggest strength? My ability to get the job done, no matter what it is, I always get it done. A lot of people can start projects, but they don't get them across even the finish Even projects line. that don't even exist. Someone comes to see you with an idea. I turn it fantasy into reality every day. And that's your strength? Absolutely. What do you do for fun? I like to travel. I don't do it very much. I don't take vacations. I'm working all the time. I feel like if I'm not here, I'm missing something, and people are missing out on me. But it, you don't think that in life you should have balance? Absolutely, and I'm looking for that balance in the next five years. What are your biggest regrets? Finding the time to have kids. Okay, why is that? Just I haven't had time to, you know, have kids. I mean, you know, everybody. You got another wants, five years though. Yeah, I got five year plan. You're gonna start working. Exit strategy. You're gonna strategy. work on it every day. Uh, every day. But that's your biggest regret. Yeah, yeah, just not having children. A little mobile mic. Yeah, mini me. You know, free pizza, free Pokemon dolls. See them on the turntables in the mix. <laughs> What's your biggest scare? None. I'm not afraid of anything. I don't live my life like that. I'm not, I don't worry about anything. You know, in, in business and in life, we make decisions and we make mistakes. And you know, you gotta live with our mistakes. Who's been your biggest mentor? Just myself. I believe I only You've take never my own had information. Mentor, never, buddy. No one has ever helped you? Well, no. you said Bo Griffin at one time. Bo Griffin, yeah, she's amazing. She just passed away 
about five years ago, pancreatic cancer. She was an amazing lady. Had the morning show here. Yeah, I love her. She had drive and inspiration, and she had more haters than you'll ever imagine in your life. I mean, the program director for the radio station hated her gut. I mean, here's a lady who had nothing but positive energy on the air, delivered a message. Everybody in the community loved her. She would be one of the mentors that went Absolutely. Time. What kind of person would you mentor, you as a person? Who would you mentor? Somebody that's really committed to whatever they're doing, because if you find something that you enjoy, you're going to be good at it. If you're doing something that you're just miserable at, you're never going to be good at it because you're never going to care. So whatever you do in life or your job or at work, you need to put 100% in and you need to be able to enjoy that. One of these kids that want to be the next mobile mic come knocking on your door. You Bring doors it on. Are, your doors are open for them. Bring it on. One question that I love to ask is, what has been your best business career move? And a lot of people can't answer that. They're afraid to actually make a move. In order for you to succeed, you have to take risks. The larger the risk, the larger the rewards. If you don't have a career move that you can remember that's your best one, then you haven't made enough. Making career moves are important. If not, you become stagnant. And then being stagnant, you become obsolete. What has been your best business career move? I would say just expanding outside just to the radio business. I would say getting out on my own and being able to not be exclusive and not be owned by anybody. I've certainly you know, been in a circle and been out there where if you don't know who Mobile Mike is, it doesn't matter what radio station you listen to, what TV station you listen to, even if you don't have a radio, you know who I am. What are your biggest agitators? People that are negative energy. You know, I was watching The Bachelor last night and a couple of the girls on there are just so negative. They're so worried about all the other girls and, and what they're thinking and who they're kissing. It's like, worry about yourself. Stay in your lane. To me, that's a huge turnoff. People that are insecure and, and just negative energy, blah, 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 blah. Every time you turn around, it's like, wow. All that negative energy could have felt, could have been used propelling you to the next level and the people around you. When you put someone else down, you're putting yourself down first. Haters, do you have any? Oh, everybody's got them. Tons of them. What do you do? You think everybody's they... happy for my success? Nah. And what do you do when they come around and they... Just ignore them. You, you, you don't even feed into them. Never so... pour gasoline on a fire. You don't allow them to bully you around? No, right? I've never been pushed around by nobody. I'm not scared of anybody. I don't live my life like that. I could retire tomorrow, sell all my stuff, and never work another day. I do this because I enjoy it. Who is the teacher you remember the most? Miss Pelkey, first grade. I used to get her all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I used to, she was allergic to wet naps. So I'd take the gum underneath her desk right before she came in and put the wet nap underneath there. Within five minutes in the class, her eyes were tearing. <laughs> we'd have to shut down the class. And on the chalkboard, we'd go early and write, write down different things. And I'd put thumbtacks on Did you ever find out it was you? Never. So you were a little trouble. I was a rebel without a cause. Nothing has changed? Not at all. What's your earliest memory? Earliest? Wow. Baby. Baby time. My favorite memory was taking my dad's truck tr tractor every time he went out of town, hauling ar ar around the neighborhood in his tractor. I was like, you know, four or five years old, and I figured out how to hotwire the tractor. <laughs> I was driving around the neighborhood, popping wheelies in the tractor. He would come back, and how come the gas tank's empty? I don't know. <laughs> you have any brothers and sisters? Yep, I have a sister. She lives in Alaska. And your parents are still alive? Yep. And what do they think about what you've done in your life? They had their concerns because I was hyperactive. I was always on the move. And I was always one step away from getting in trouble. I mean, I was like, you know, I was a class clown. I was Mr. Creative. I always had something to say. And you know, they also I thought you were going to be an attorney. Right. They thought I was going to be an attorney. And then I went in the roofing and construction business in Detroit. Do sure they visit enough. you? or do you? Oh, visit? yeah. They come down every couple of years. And they see your success? Yep. They're amazed. I have them picked up in the, the, at the airport in limousines and bodyguards. And they're like, they get a kick out of it. Like, wow, really? Who lives awesome. like this? How does that make you feel? Good. It's great to see their smiling faces. And, and then, then for 20 minutes at dinner, they're like, this is ridiculous. What are you wasting your time and money for? This is crazy. Who lives like this? So it's, to them, it's like a dream. Right. It's like, wow, really? What net worth? would you like to achieve? I'd like to be in the billion dollar range. Why? It's a great number. I mean, when you look at people like Warren Buffett and Carlos Slim, that's big money. That's real money. But why? Why would you want to get there? Money is power, and I don't really care about power. It's just, it's the wow factor. It's like, you can pretty much have anything you want, anytime you want it. You have everything that every guy wants. So what can a billion dollars do for you right now? Buy more businesses, I would acquire more assets and change more people's lives. What legacy do you want to leave behind? I just want to be known as the, as the person that changed the way things were done. And everything I've been involved in, whether it's events, radio, community service, 
just the overall way of presenting something. My way of doing it is completely different. You've seen the festivals and events down here or, or wherever they do them, and there's usually one or two radio stations, and they do a basic guerrilla marketing plan. Mine is to bring in everything. You want to cater to all the demographics. It doesn't matter what they are. You want to talk to everybody and make everybody happy, and that's what I'm about, just bringing different people from different cultures together. What's your favorite kind of conversation? Work. So you're all about work. I don't, yeah, I mean, I go out and I'm talking about what, what the next plan is, how we're going to get there, what's our strategic plan of attack, what makes us different from other people. When someone ties a torpedo us, how are we going to, you know, But do you think that all about work is really being balanced? No, but there's a five-year plan. There's no balance. There's zero balance right now. And zero balance in your life or zero balance, yes, your beliefs? It's all system. business. Always. It's always been like that. Yep. So are you ready to do a little shift or are you just going to keep pushing? I'm ready for a shift. What's the biggest misconception about mobile mic? People don't know what I do, a lot of people. They just think that I'm a guy that goes out on the radio and goes to Dunkin' Donuts and gives away free food and a t-shirt. They don't understand all the mechanisms that I'm involved in, all the people that work for me, the operation that I truly run, and the operation that truly will be coming soon. Who is mobile mic as a person? Just somebody that works his ass off. You just love work. Yep. You love being on stage and entertaining people and taking the energy to another level. When I walk into someone else's live broadcast and I take the microphone for 15 seconds and I do my spiel, everybody looks at the guy who's doing it and goes, Oof, what did they hire him for? Not everybody can be mobile mic. Not everybody possesses my energy, my skill, and my ability to see into the future and be able to lift people up and just boom, and energize them. It's, it's so when you wake up moment. in the morning, it's all about work. When you go to sleep, it's, it's all, about, all work. about work. I sleep with three computers and notepads and I'm nonstop. What piece of advice do you wish you had in the past? If you were able to go back two, three, four, five years and realize some of the things that you could have done to get you to a different level of success today, would you do it? Sometimes we're able to go to the past and see what we should have done. Well, guess what? It's not too late. Start taking action on those things right now. A lot of times we use age as an excuse. I'm a little older. If I would have done that five years ago, I would be in a different place. It's never too late. The best time to start taking action is when? No. Um, what piece of advice do you wish you had if you can go back? Probably would have done this in New York. <laughs> I don't know. It's a different market. It's a different market. I think that I should have expanded in New York a long time ago. It's a great market. I've been up there and everyone always told me and I never should have listened. Oh, you're, you're, right now you're a big fish in a little pond. You would have went up there and you would have been a minnow in a, in a giant ocean. I've went up to New York and every time and I align the stars like you do. When I go into a seminar and I go into a thing, I don't write a speech, I don't need whatever. I light people up, I say what I feel, and it just, you can just see like, wow, really? Have you ever made a mistake saying something that's offended someone at the moment? You always audience? say things that no, offend but, people. But have you ever seen an audience turn off on you and then no, you're like, wait. never had that, never had that, but you're always gonna be saying things to people that they feel are inappropriate. I don't cross the line, you know, I'm mainstream, I represent companies that are, you know, some of them publicly traded, so, you know, in the last Last 10 years, I've been very careful with my brand. And what advice would you give someone that's trying to do what you're doing? Good luck. It's not so easy. Um, radio has changed, television's changed, media has changed. You'll never be able to big build a brand like I have because nobody will allow you to. The radio stations nowadays don't even want you to hardly say your name. They don't want anybody to come bigger than their brand or all of their brands together. They can't stand it when you are a Ryan Seacrest, an Elvis Duran, a Mobile Mike. It's very difficult for them to digest. Those people are always going to exist, but it's, it's, you know, they have a real problem and they fear when that happens. How long did it take before you realized that you were successful? You never realize you're successful. I never pat myself on the back and say, wow, what a great day it is. Yesterday, I started working out a couple days ago. I'm in the gym yesterday and, you know, I'm looking at the thing and I'm thinking to myself, Wow, I left the office three hours earlier than I normally do. I'm here, I'm doing something for me, health-wise, making sure I stay in shape and live a little bit longer. So it's no pat on the back, but you gotta kinda start to balance things as you you know, get to our age. And you gotta think about you know, working 18 hours, 19 hours a day is great, but you, know, you also gotta take into consideration, you gotta eat right, which I've always done, drink a lot of water, I don't drink or do drugs, and, and you gotta get in the gym and take care of your body. It's the only one you get. So I'm starting to balance that, that's been the last three weeks. That's, that's why I look 20 years old still. <laughs> you haven't changed since the day right. I met you. Yeah. <laughs> when you stare yourself in the mirror, what do you see? I see the same person I saw 18 years old. You still see that hunger Absolutely. and that drive? Yeah, and... 100%, yep. 
Is he a happy person or a sad person? Happy person. I'm right where I want to be. I'm nowhere near finishing my goals. Um, you know, we've had great discussions on where mobile mics should go in the future. With the technology that we have, we have access to anything that we actually need in order to become experts in our industry. See, one of the things that I truly believe is that people will follow experts. People will buy from experts. So if you're not yet known as an expert in your industry, then you have to go back and study and become that person. How do you keep yourself polished besides or like mentally being able to be in front of someone and know exactly what words to say? Do you practice anything? No do, practice. You read, do you read no any practice. books? No, no practice, no reading books, no singing in the shower. It just comes in. No internet Googling. It just it comes natural. How do you want to die? Wow. <laughs> I want to make it to 100 years old. 100? Yeah, maybe 120. Like uh, George Burns? Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I just, you know, I, I just think I'm going to look the same at that age. I'm still going to be laughing, having a good time, and entertaining people. So you really want to go all the way to 100? Nah, you know, damn near it. I truly believe that everyone has greatness inside of them. The only person that holds them back is themselves. By us getting this interview in, and, and there's another little mobile mic out there that wants to be the mini me. You're even saying, you know what, I'm here if, if you're willing to walk in the door, I but bring, people won't do it. No, I bring people in all the time in the last five years, for example. I would say 15 people have come in and wanted to, you know, follow me around and do their thing. But, you know, within 30 days, they're like, Burn out. I hear this, you know, no risk, no reward. What do you want? I mean, you got to get, oh, man. No, I can't make it. I, my girlfriend's blah. Listen, I, I got up at 5.15 this morning. It's 1.15. I haven't eaten anything. I won't eat until maybe you take me to lunch. But, I mean, I eat one meal a day, and I don't have time to stop, and I'm not crying. Oh, wait, I got to go to the bathroom. Hey, oh, I need this. Drink a lot of water and keep the machine rolling. People don't get it. They, don't, they, can't, they can't do it. I mean, a lot of people could have been. I could have had 20 people working for me. Over the years, wonder, over 100. Wonder. Everybody comes in, I get it, I want to do it, I'm going to follow you, I can drive the trucks. You don't have a CDL, how are you going to drive the truck? What's a CDL? And listen, my guys who get it, they cook on the weekends in the truck, as you know, they drive the trucks, they set it up, they run the searchlights, they change the oil in the generator, they're here doing this as a controller, they're printing jobs, they're printing t-shirts. Because all that you did eggs. too, though. Well, I do when it. When you first started. I guess still do it. What's your potential? There, I have no limitations. My biggest fallback and my biggest mistake probably the last year is sitting in this office, being the CFO, the CEO, and, and trying to run my business as a general sales manager and everything else. When my time is better spent out there, I need to have a team in here running the business. I don't need to be in here. I'm the brand. Why am I supervising all of the aspects of my business? And there's a lot. There's no reason for it. I'm holding myself back out. I mean, I'm on here on the phone today. I picked up five new clients before noon that I just need to go out and set the meetings up. Yep. And, and I got to get outside the office. I got to have more people in the back end to run it. My problem is I'm trying to overly micromanage everything because that's the key to my success. So what are some of the things that we learned from Mobile Mike? Number one, wake up early. He who wakes up early will have more chances to succeed than those people that wake up really late. Number two, tenacity. Being able to be tenacious, never giving up, no matter what happens or what anyone says. Number three, be willing to help people. Have an open mind and an open heart for those people that come to you and ask for help. Remember that one person that actually helped you, helped you get to where you are today. Number four, recognize opportunity. Opportunity is everywhere as long as you have your eyes open and you're paying attention to life. Number five, consistency. Doing the same thing again and again and again. Not giving up. No matter what happens, don't ever give up. Because if you give up, you're giving up on your dream. I hope you truly enjoyed this interview. So stay tuned for more interviews to come. Until next time, I'm Bert Oliva, reminding you to make it happen.